I wanted to show you this picture today because back in uh, 2017, we did a memorial service for, for our mom. And Ranger Joe came with us, helped us with sound. And uh, uh, did the Richters come too? Uh, I, I can't remember. I, I, but uh, there was, uh, we had a lot of different folks that we've known through the years. The, the church was packed. In fact, pastor there at the time, his church hadn't been that full. And it was a real testimony about mom's character and, and how she was. Because she would give anything to anybody. She would do anything for anybody. And that's just who she was. And, uh, um, uh, the, you know, growing up was fun. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. But uh, before I say much more about my mom, I wanted to give Pastor Matthew a chance to come up and, and tell you a quick story about mom from, from his perspective. And and then I want to share this message with you, and, and I think the truth and the character uh, that we're going to demonstrate to you today through what Mom taught us will be special to you, too. So, Pastor Matthew, come on. Amen. Praise God. My mom was in tune with the Holy Spirit. That's right. I um, was not a perfect teenager. <laughs> Don't be shocked. No stoning <coughs> after church. Um, but I... I didn't get into drugs or anything like that, but I wasn't perfect. And I know some of you can relate. Um, but the thing is, Mom always knew what I was doing. Because oh I'd come gosh. home, and she'd say, yeah. the Spirit told me what you were doing. <laughs> my and God. She, and she said it. <laughs> Jesus. And so um, I had a little problem with the Holy Spirit at that time. You know, we, <laughs> we weren't best friends. And... Um, but she was in tune with the Holy Spirit because she spent time at the, every day I woke up, the, the breakfast table had her Kenneth Copeland study Bible and her Marilyn Hickey magazine. I forget the name of the magazine, but mm -hmm. she was always doing her devotions and yeah. spending time in the Word, getting prepared and being in tune with the Spirit. She loved um, spreading the gospel and sharing things she gave everything away literally um and but she above all enjoyed spreading the gospel especially through the means of duplicating tapes and cds and dvds but she loved thousands um, upon thousands but she loved sharing that and giving that but she also wanted to make sure you were filled with the Spirit. You did. You couldn't go into her house with her, uh, with her singing Judy Jacobs. These are the days of Elijah with her fingers just like this, you know. Um, but she loved that, and she was in tune with the Spirit. And so you young people, um, your mommies love the Holy Spirit, and um, they know what you're doing. Yep. They know what you're doing. <laughs> well, I mean, that's true. Hey, stay a minute, because it might be something else come to your thoughts. Um, Mom would uh, bring people in the house, and you know our mom was a beautician, and she would you know back comb all the blue hair and uh, do all the different things that she would do, and uh, but they'd sit there and talk about Jesus in the house. And yeah. you remember uh, Margaret, um, uh, I forgot her last name, Trout, yeah. is that right? And uh, uh, Mary. and Mary, and uh, they get in there and just have a Holy Ghost fit. Y'all know what a Holy Ghost fit is, don't you? Yeah. I mean, they start laughing and carrying on. Uh, but mom, before you left, you know, she'd make sure you would have a, a boatload of cassette tapes or, uh, or a pocket full of money. Pocket full of money. She'd come up and she'd shove money in your pocket and say, yep. don't tell your brothers I'm giving you this. <laughs> Even when mom had Alzheimer's, uh, uh, she came up to me when I was there. and My stepfather was right beside her. And she came up and looked me in the eye. She said, don't you tell Joe, but you go get in my purse and you get you whatever you want out of that and keep it. And uh, um, he looked at me with, woof, cutting eyes. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not. Um, but mom didn't just do that for us, though. She did that for everybody. Everybody. Even when we brought friends home, everybody. When, yeah. when the Jehovah Witnesses or whoever showed up at the door, everybody. Everybody. That's how she was. And uh, I know there's a lot of things about the farmers we could talk about, too, but her uh, character of faith and her character of hope and the way she loved has a lot to do with who we are and how we respond. And I know Matthew has, how far out are you booked right now in your jobs? To August. 
And, and that is a testimony of our mom who was so hard working. And the farmer side too has always been very hard workers and, and go the extra mile. How many repeat customers do you have? This was something that stood out to me in my all, notes. All of them are repeat. All of them are repeat. In fact, Matthew puts them first before he'll take new calls. Isn't that something? But that's because of the character that was instilled in our lives as, as young men. And, um, and it means a lot. And it's why we are who we are. Is there anything else that comes to your mind where you go? No? Okay. I wanted to give you a chance. Um, we're yeah. very thankful to have many moms in our life, like yeah. Pastor James was saying, especially our father married a wonderful yes. woman, and she loves us as her own. And so we're very thankful for Juanita she, also. Yeah, Juanita texted me last night and wanted to let us know how much she loved us and appreciated it. I tell you, uh, if there's anybody who has a tender heart that I've ever met in my life, it's my stepmom. Uh, and I, I, it doesn't take a whole lot to get her to tear up. And, <laughs> and uh, even when we're playing a silly game, she took it to heart <laughs> and uh, got teared up. And, and, you know, all that stuff ministers to you no matter how old you are. How many of you know that your mom has influence on you? Even those of you that your mom's gone home to be with the Lord, that influence is still in your life, isn't it? Can I hear a big amen? amen. I mean, I, don't, I know some of you were raised in different environments. I mean, I could tell you some stories where we were raised and, and there were some hard times, okay? Um, but there's more things to be thankful for in life than there is to reminisce and hate over. Can I say that again? There are more things in your life and in my life to where, where we can stop, take a deep breath, and be thankful than there is to be hateful about. Because just as our parents were not perfect, guess what? You're not perfect either. And we all make mistakes, don't we? One of the things that I want to make sure I, I share with you today is, this is what the title is, The Things I Learned About the Lord from My Mom. But before I even go there, I, I, I wanted to share this statement with you. I heard Keith Moore say, In dark times, light shines. In dark times, light always shines. Are you listening to me? It doesn't matter how bleak things are, light always shines. Even in the midst of war and darkness, there is light that, that glimmers. It's been... You know, uh, in the Battle of Bastogne in World War II, there was a, a time when the guns silenced at Christmas. And if you've uh, uh, heard the stories or watched the recreation of it, soldiers on both sides would begin to sing Silent Night. In dark times, light always shines. And, this, and when I heard that statement, it made me think of where I wanted to go today for Mother's Day, and I was kind of praying all along uh, after we missed Easter, Easter. I know some of you have your Easter clothes on today. That's wonderful. Amen. Uh, and and y'all look so pretty today. Hey, glory to God. Everybody say, I'm so pretty. I'm so pretty. You are so pretty. Amen. Uh, but you know, uh, I was thinking since we had Easter taken away from us, and uh, we didn't in our heart, but you know what I mean. Uh, we couldn't get together. I, I got to pray, and I said, Lord, I really felt like we're going to open on, on Mother's Day. I was, I was on my heart all along, and lo and behold, here we are. But, you know, no matter how dark it gets, Jesus' light shines. But you need to understand, Jesus' light shines through you. The light of God shines through you. You're the only vision of Jesus in the flesh that anybody will ever see until we see him face to face. Unless he appears to you and shares some things with you. But you know what? You're the image of the Messiah in the earth today. And you need in these dark times to let the light shine. Can I hear a big amen? amen. See, the whole world, the whole world has been experiencing a lot of trouble. There's been trying times in, in some areas of the country where um, this virus has really been inundated, uh, so to speak, or really attacked. And there's been a lot of physical and emotional things that have happened through all this. Can I hear a big amen? 
Uh, one of my best friends in, in from Bible college, his daughter went to New York and did a, a 21 day stint uh, serving in one of the worst hospitals. She's now in a 14 day lockdown as she's going back home so she can spend time with her three boys, her husband and her two kids. And uh, um, she's not got to see them yet. There's three boys, right? <laughs> all, hey ladies, all men are boys. <laughs> Their toys get bigger and cost more. That's all it is, all right? Uh, amen. If it's not the PlayStation, it is the 4x4 truck. Amen. Or the airplane or whatever. But, uh, you know, uh, even in uh, all this emotional and physical, I mean, it's been emotion uh, driven, hadn't it? Even on the political side of it, emotions are high right now. But see, in, in, in the midst of darkness, your light needs to shine. But what's this got to do about, about your mom, pastor, and about Mother's Day? Well, you know, growing up, things weren't always easy. And, and Matthew would say amen to that. There had been times that it was tough. Uh, you know, when I was 13, our parents divorced, and uh, um, we went through, it was a different time. And if you've ever lived through divorce, it, it affects kids. It affects your, your family deeply. And uh, when uh, uh, our dad moved up to Alaska and flew uh, Matthew and my brother up there and spent time with him so he could have one-on-one -on -one time with them, and uh, it was just a different time. I was in Bible college. I, I graduated high school. But the year I was graduating high school, my mom remarried and married somebody who was a totally polar opposite of my father. And um, everything changed. And uh, it was tough. But growing up, I remember as a young boy, uh, it wasn't always easy. Even after being an only child for nine point something years, uh, and, and then my other brothers came along, uh, it was just different. And there was tough times. We moved a lot as a kid, not because of military, but because my father was a banker and he served in different places. We, we were in Fairbanks, Alaska. We were in Knoxville. We were in uh, Beaufort, South Carolina, right near Hilton Head. Um, there was a lot of moving that went on. We almost moved to Chattanooga at one time. And uh, um, just different, changing schools, going to different things. But you know, one thing I learned through my parents and through my mom especially was through it all, God's loving hand was always there. How many of you can testify to that? No matter how our parents were, God's hand was on you, wasn't he? Amen? Those of you watching at home, God's hand has always been on you. You know, our mom uh, came to a place where she started seeking the Lord and, and seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And she, she received, uh, rededicated her life, and then she got filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know, as she grew in the Lord, I mean, scriptures were plastered all over the house, all over the bathroom mirrors. And uh, uh, even when she had Alzheimer's uh, in, uh, in the beginning stages, she had scriptures about her mind everywhere in the house. And she would confess those. You know, she got to where she would forget them, but as soon as she would go back in uh, to where she had those scriptures posted, she would speak those. And you know, there was times she was really sharp towards the end. I remember before she passed away, she called me, uh, well, I had called and was talking to my stepfather, and then he said, you want to talk to your mom? It's a good time. And so I talked to her, and we talked one-on-one. -on -one. I, I, I learned things I hadn't heard before. And she told me some things that I knew were true. And uh, uh, it encouraged me. And she asked me what I was doing. We have this thing sometimes on Saturday night or Sunday night. Uh, we, we will uh, have a big breakfast. And uh, I'm sitting there mixing gravy. And she asked, what are you doing? I said, I, well, I'm making gravy for gravy and biscuit. And she goes, oh, I didn't know you knew how to do that. I said, well, Mom, you taught me how to do it over the phone once. I did. Well, I remember that, yeah. And we began to talk for a while. You know, when somebody's precious to you, you need to recognize that, and you need to not forget how precious they are. Because you know what? All of you in here wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Amen. Amen. You need to love your mamas. Hallelujah. But you know, as mom grew in the, in the Lord, I believe she instilled things into us that as, as we became young men and, and now older, those things have, have held true in our lives and keep us uh, focused in the direction that we go. And I am very thankful for that. Amen. Um, I'm very, very, very thankful for that. In fact, the things that I want to share with you today are things that we hold true in our hearts but it's the things that I've learned from uh, our mom, from her character, or from the language that she spoke, 
or from the way she would help and bless other people. And, and these are the points I want to share with you today. And all these things have kept us solid. I believe they've kept Pastor Matthew solid and all of our brothers. But I know one thing that we learn from both sides of the family, and that is always be a giver and a lover of people. That's important. In fact, that's, I think that's something all of us farmers hold to be true. We've always had ministry in our family on the farmer side, even in some of the uh, of, of mom's side. Uh, there are many ministers in that family. But mom instilled a deep sense of belief of specific things that I want to share with you today to honor her. Okay? So these are the things that I learned about the Lord from my mom. And they're in your handout, but I'm going to say a few things extra that you might want to write down today. Okay? But, you know, the first thing that I learned from my mom was this. That is that uh, sickness and disease, are, it is not from our good father. Can I hear a big amen? amen? God doesn't put things on you to teach you something. If you believe that, you ain't read your Bible correctly. Because nowhere in the New Testament does it show that. Okay? There were consequences in the Old Testament if you got into sin. You opened the door up for not obeying and following, hearkening unto the voice of the Lord. Read Deuteronomy 28, you understand what I'm saying. And then after you read that, go read Galatians 3.13, uh, and you realize you've been redeemed from all the curses that were back then. And it'll help you look at Jesus in a whole new light. Because Jesus came that you might have life and have it more what? Abundantly, Abundantly to the full. Okay? But... Uh, uh, Mom always was very quick when she got into the Word, and the Scriptures were all throughout the house. Sickness, sickness and disease is not from God the Father. It's not from our good Father. Our Father God in heaven is not sitting up there with a gray beard and a two-by-four with a nail in it, looking for a moment to beat you to death. That's not who our God is. He is a good Father. Everybody say good Father. See, whatever steals, whatever kills, whatever destroys is a work of the devil. Amen. And the devil in the scripture is known as the destroyer. The destroyer. In fact, I got several scriptures here on one slide. But John 10, 10 in the Amplified Bible says, The thief, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and to what? Destroy. I came, Jesus came, that they might have and enjoy life. And have it in abundance to the full till it what? Overflows. That's from the Amplified Translation. Then Luke uh, chapter 9 verse 56 says from the Amplified, Jesus speaking here, For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them from the penalty of eternal death. Part of eternal death was all of the curse. The curse was poverty, sickness, disease, and lack. Jesus died so that you could be free from that. And he died so that the coronavirus could be under your feet because it is. Amen. Any sickness, any disease, any cancer, all of that is under your feet. If there's anything we learn from mom, we learn that. We learn that the curse is in the earth. And unless somebody lives in the, uh, in the Lord's redemption and protection, that curse will affect anybody else you got to be living in the Lord's redemption, being born again. If you're born again, then you're under His protection and you've been redeemed from the curse. Somebody say amen. 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 See, if, you, if you're living in the Lord's redemption and protection, it won't, all this curse won't affect you. It might try to attack you and get on you, but you can speak to it and command it to go, can't you? Absolutely. Amen. How can you say that? Well, because... In Galatians 3.13, it says, but Christ. Amen. I like that's why I hear people say, but God. You know, it was dark, but God. Amen. Man, I, I went through that valley, but by God, I came on the other side because of God. Amen. See, you know, Jesus redeemed you and he redeemed me from the curse of the law. You know, if you go and study all the curses, you'll find references to acne, to arthritis, to gout, to, to uh, uh, cancer, to tumors, to boils. And, and I could go on and on and on. All of it is a part of the curse. 
if you didn't hearken diligently to the voice of you, the Lord your God, and obey Him. But see, we're not under the curse, are we? Cursed is anyone who hangs on the tree. Who hung on the tree for you? Jesus did. Therefore, you know what? All you need to do is repent, trust in the Lord, follow His leadings, and you know what? You can always be safe and sound. Can I hear a big amen? Amen. amen. Always, always, always be safe and sound. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Well, you know, uh, if anything uh, in our lives, you know, uh, that I learned it from my mom, we went through a lot of stuff. We went through a lot of stuff. Uh, we had things happen to us. We, our, uh, our grandmother had businesses that, uh, that burned twice. Uh, her home burned twice. Uh, two different places, uh, different things. It's, one of them was flooded. One of them burned. Uh, a lot of different things happened. We, we've experienced murder in our family, two different occasions. And uh, we were, we, we've seen things happen uh, where there was loss, but then all of a sudden, sudden recovery. Amen. And I really believe our economy, folks, is going to snap back quick. Amen. Uh, last Sunday, Elizabeth was here at church, and she told us about a guy at Pickwick Lake. He was only open two days. In two days, he made over $20,000. He was trying to figure out how to slow people down from buying stuff. That's how this economy is going to snap back. There's one famous economist. Uh, he believes the economy is like a string on a yo-yo. If you pull it down real tight in tough, tough times, it snaps back lightning fast and explodes. I believe that's what's going to happen in the United States of America. Amen. But, I mean, we went through a lot of stuff growing up. I saw different ones in our family go through things, but yet... They always came back because they knew that we had a good father. Amen. And that we weren't under the curse. See, second thing mom always taught us and that we learned from our mother is that God is always your source. Source really should be capital S because we talk about the providence of God. God is always your source. Not this economy, but his economy. God is your source. Not Fred Smith if you work at FedEx. God is your source, not your boss, not wherever it is you work at, not your clients. Who's your source, church? God is your source. We learned that from mom and from our parents, from my father, from different ones in our family. But especially in mom because we watched her fix hair and even when she wasn't remarried, she still found ways to provide for things that we didn't think we'd ever get to have. From the fancy tennis shoes to anything else we wanted. Mom knew God was her source. We knew God was our source. We see in the scriptures that God provided for his people miraculously, even spe in spectacular ways. Everybody say spectacular. <laughs> God will move for you in spectacular ways. In fact, in the bleakest of circumstances, God brought food by the ravens. Amen. He brought manna from heaven. And if you'll only rely on him, and if you'll only follow his leadings, guess what? He will always take care of you. Amen. And it's not just by allowing, he was not going to just allow you just a little bit to get you by. No. Above and beyond, it's right, all you can ask or think, but it's by the power that works within you. You're the one that has the voice. You're the one that has the faith. The promises have been given. You have to speak it out and, 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 and attain it by speaking your faith. Amen? You've got to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. See, if we rely on Him and we follow Him and follow His leadings and, and speak His word, He'll take care of you. And He won't just allow you to survive. No, the Lord called, caused Isaac to reap a hundredfold. Amen. In the same year, even in the midst of a famine, God caused Isaac to reap a hundredfold. Amen. Guess what? My God hasn't changed. Has yours? He's, the, he's still the same. Yesterday, today, and how long? What he did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, and anywhere else in the Old or the New Testament, he'll do for you right now. Amen. He'll do for you right now, just like this verse says that we've been praying over this church family. In times of disaster, they will not what? Wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy what? Plenty. Shout that word out. What? Plenty. Plenty. Amen. Psalm 37, 19. 
Amen. Well, you know, another thing that mom taught us that was really powerful to me, especially after experiencing divorce, and I had some issues in high school, and uh, I kind of lived a, a double standard life for a while. But you know what? I, I come to terms with it and, and got my heart right. But one of the things I realized from watching how my mom and how Matthew will testify to it too, how she would do and give things to other people and, 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 and fix food for you and do anything in the world for you. But one of the reasons why, and I didn't really learn this until after she was gone, the more I thought about it, I realized, especially at the service we did, how packed it was that day, uh, that evening. It was full and, and realized how many people she touched. And then another whole half of that, another whole half more, I uh, couldn't be there, sent all sorts of notes and, and, and things on Facebook and things. But you, my friends, you are personally his witnesses. Amen. If you act like a snotty little stuck-up pig, then, you know, that's on you. But see, you're an ambassador of the Most High God. You are personally his witnesses. And you ought to act accordingly. The New Testament says you are ambassadors. You know what an ambassador is, don't you? You're a representative of the nation that you are, are serving as, or as an ambassador for, right? You are personally his witness. See, when other people panic, you should be, have a witness of his peace. See, when, when everybody else is in turmoil, in the midst of it all, you're walking in, in his divine presence, in his divine life. Because the greater one lives on the inside of you. Amen. We can all do this because we know in whom we have believed. And we are fully persuaded. Amen. That he is able to always keep you. And to keep me. And to protect you. And to protect me. Amen. He is able to keep us at all times. Hallelujah. You know there's a lot of people who don't know him. And they don't know how to hear from God. And they don't know anything about faith. But see, you and I need to set the example before them. Walking in faith. Walking in love. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days of the year. You are called to be a believer. Amen. We must set the example. Amen. We should be gracious instead of grabbing all we can because we're in terror that we won't have it. We should be gracious and be giving away more than we're taking in. Come on now. Or just go ahead and live like the unbelievers. Fly the skull and crossbones with a mask on it. We're called to believe. Do you believe? Amen. I know we walk in wisdom when we go to stores and different things. Don't. Correct me on that. I'm with you, all right? But listen to me. We're an ambassador of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What you been doing lately? Amen? What you been doing? See, we're supposed to not be grabbing all we can like the unbelievers and, and being, we should be ready and patiently ready to share with others how God is really the answer to all this mess. Amen? Hallelujah. I wasn't kidding. You know, we did give away toilet paper. Anybody came to church, you, you, those of you that were here. I'm not kidding. We gave paper. We were invited over to uh, some, for, some, some folks' house. We all got together. I brought paper towels for everybody. <laughs> you know, it's the example we set. Will be, it will be the example that we live. The example we set will be the blessing that we walk in or the curse. See, you are personally His witnesses. Amen. Which brings me to number four, and I've kind of said it already, and, and I, I forgot where I was. But you know, Mom always ta told me uh, when Matthew and David were younger before she remarried, you can always overcome anything. I had a problem with math growing up. I, I was a special case in third grade. Uh, <laughs> my teacher... Uh, 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 I don't even know how to explain this the way you do, uh, but uh, why well, was it you explained it? Well, no, no, no. There was things that I did, and you kind of wondered why I was that way. And uh, um, 
I would I talk to myself sometimes and do things. Uh, when I was in third grade, Mrs. Brams, who I loved dearly, moved me from the seat I was in in her classroom to a desk right next to her desk. And I would sit there and play with my fingers and talk to myself and uh, do all sorts of things and uh, all of that. But my, my teacher loved me, and she, she taught me things. And I remember as I struggled with math from Mrs. Brams to Mrs. Martin to Mrs. Dickerson to Mrs. Lane, uh, probably Miss Lane, uh, um, all through that time frame, I went to summer school. I went to Maryville College to a special tutor. And, 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 I, and even though I struggled with things, I overcame those things. Are you with me? And even though I had, a, I had a concentration issue in third grade, you know, later in life, as I graduated high school, and when I graduated high school a year early because I went to summer school and finished up early. Uh, yeah, that's how much things I overcame, okay? Uh, but later, you know, when, when Pastor Matthew got to Mrs. Bram's class, guess who got to sit next to her desk again? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, Hey, oh, <laughs> uh, Matthew said we were all the way up in front of the chalkboard. That's true. Amen. But I love, I, I, you love Mrs. Brams too, and I, I did. Oh, man, I love that lady. I remember I, I went to Washington, D.C. to see our great, grand, uh, uh, I, actually, our great grandfather was with us, and we went up to see a, a, a cousin or an uncle get buried at Arlington National Cemetery, the whole horse and the carriage, the whole thing. And I, I'll never forget that. But what I'm getting at is this. No matter what went on in life, you just knew you're an overcomer. Again, we went, I, I witnessed growing up a lot of family tragedy, okay? Um, I found out later how my grandfather was murdered and, and the, the spectacle it was in Knoxville, Tennessee at the trial and then the funeral. I didn't know all this until I got older. And looking back and seeing my grandmother overcome stuff and still run her business and still love God and still made sure that we were in church and all of this stuff, it's a tremendous testimony. But all of it falls back on the character we were shown as young people that we are always an overcomer and not an underachiever. Amen. There's nothing about your life that's a terrible thing to waste. Do you understand that? Everyone is an overcomer if they'll receive Jesus. Amen. Doesn't matter how many businesses were burned by fire, homes lost by fire, health issues, different things and so much more. Through it all, we witnessed an overcoming spirit of faith that pressed on so that they could, could, could fulfill their mission in life. And that still today drives me, and I know it drives Pastor Matthew and, and many in our family, that overcoming spirit of faith that causes you to drive forward and press on to fulfill the mission of God in, in your life. We always learn that. And, and you know, I, I can't say it enough in 2 Corinthians 2.14, but thanks be unto God who always causes us to what? Triumph. triumph. Everybody look at your neighbor and say triumph. He's always causing you and me to triumph in life. You need to believe that. You know what? Romans 8, 37 says, In all these things we are what? More than a conqueror through him that loved us. You know, because Jesus loves you, you've been made not only a conqueror, but what? More than a conqueror. Folks, that's something to be happy about. We learned that from our mom. Amen. Always an overcomer. Well, those are the four biggies. But then... Uh, Yesterday, the day before yesterday, I sat down as I was finishing my notes and uh, typing things in. I got to thinking about some of, some of these points. And, I, and, and, you know, you need to refuse to entertain or consider anything except complete overwhelming victory in your life. Even through all this mess that we've been dealing with, you know what? You need to refuse to accept anything but overcoming overwhelming victory in your life. Don't accept defeat. Don't accept fear. Don't accept it. Let freedom ring in your life. He who the Son has set free is what? Free, free indeed. 
Don't accept or consider anything or entertain a thought except complete, overwhelming victory. Why? 1 John 5, 4 says this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen? Well, as I was finishing writing everything down and, and typing it up and, and tweaking things a little bit, it hit me a, a list that was uh, I saw written in my mom's Bible, one of the Bibles, Matthew, and, uh, uh, when he, he was going up, we were trying to help clean out the house and things, and she had a bunch of Bibles, and we all got a personal one that was mom's. But there's a hand note in there, and I know where she got it from because this man was my pastor when I, I, when I grew up in high school at, at, at Redemption Center in Knoxville. <clears throat> but this list, it was written in her Bible, actually came from Pastor Ed King. And, and, and I want to give it to you. It's in your handout today. If you didn't get one, you can get one before you go. It's back there next to the offering buckets. But, uh, and I'm sorry that it's small, but I just wanted to put it up there like a handwritten note, okay? And uh, mom, mom lived by these things, and, and really all these things are things she instilled in us, whether we knew it or not, whether it was spoken verbally or whether it was by impression, okay? How many of somebody's affected you by their impression? Oh, yeah. Well, here's, here's some things I want to leave you with, and I'm going to run through them real quick. Always, always remember these absolute truths here, and these are loving facts that, that we saw in our mom. Number one, God will never leave you. Never. Don't ever think. If God seems far away, you're the one that moved. He's always there. Number two, your greatest enemy is fear. The devil's been defeated. He's under your feet. Well, don't you think you need to be quiet about that? The devil might hear you. Well, I hope he did. He's under my feet. See, fear is what we are our greatest enemy, Right? Third thing you need to understand, you know, I had somebody tell me once they got mad at me because they thought I didn't believe in being attacked. I mean, literally, they got mad. They were yelling at me. Listen, number three, trouble comes to all of us. But God will always make a way for you out of trouble. I may be more guilty of not acknowledging when trouble is there because I choose to speak the word first. And if, I, if I'm guilty for that, then praise God for it. Because I'm going to speak the word first because the word works. Are you listening to me today? Trouble's going to come to everybody. You're going to go through a couple speed bumps in the parking lot of life. But God always make a way for you. Number four, keep from being self-centered in your life and always do good for other people. Amen. How many selfish people have we seen a lot? Hmm? Don't be that way. Number five, you're going to get through this. Amen. I went through a tough time long before I went met Melissa, and I remember my mom and my aunt coming down to Cleveland, Tennessee, and taking care of me, doing nice things for me, bought me dishes, pots and pans, and all sorts of stuff. It was a hard time. I was young and stupid. But I remember her looking at me before she left and my aunt being there with her. And she told me in no uncertain terms, you're going to get through this and it'll be okay. And you know it was. No matter what happens in your life, you will get through it. All right? Number six, your life does not have to be the worst after this. It can be better. It can be better. Okay? I always loved hearing Robert Shuler say, tough times never last, but tough people do. Remember that? Number seven, you have hope and you have a future, don't you? Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that. He has, a hope, he has hope for you. He's got a future plan for you, and it's a good one. Amen. And the last ones are very, very important. The last three. Mom was always very thankful for what people did for her. But she loved doing for others more than she sometimes would let people do for her. But she always was insistent about us being thankful. You need to be thankful. Number nine, you need to keep your joy. Amen. If you let the devil steal your joy, he'll steal all your goods. Isn't that what Brother Jerry said? 
If you're going to let the devil steal your joy, he's going to steal all your goods too. You need to rejoice a lot more. Amen. And number 10, last one. Live life day to day. Rest in your eternal hope and joy. Because he always sustains and takes care of you. Can I hear a big amen this morning? Amen. Which brings me to the central theme. This is what I want you to leave with today. I saved it for last. No matter what, in the toughest of circumstances, God is with you and uh, you always have the victory. No matter what, in the toughest of circumstances, God is with you and you always, always have the victory. Can I hear a big amen? Amen. amen. Don't forget that all this week and all the rest of the days of your life. No matter what, you always have the victory. Amen? Y'all believe that with me today? Yes. Amen. Well, praise God. Did you learn something today? Yes. Well, let's pray together. Would you do that with me? Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord, you've provided for all of us. Well, Lord, this morning, before we, we pray in particular here, Lord, we just say thank you for our moms. Whether our moms are still alive, or whether, Lord, as, as in the case of our mom, she's in heaven with, with granny, with grandmother, with all the family. Lord, we just thank you that, that they're getting things ready, getting things together for your return. Lord, we just thank you for all the things and all the many blessings our mothers have been to each and every one of us. Lord, we're so thankful for the gifts and, and the things that she instilled in our lives. Lord, this morning we just say thank you to our moms. Thank you for the gift of God and the character of God in their lives. Thank you for the good things we learned, even if they didn't know you, the good things that we learned from them that, that, that have kept us and kept us focused and kept us sound. Lord, we thank you for these things today. Father, with heads bowed and eyes closed, nobody looking around, if we're in here, we've not made you Lord of our lives. Lord, I thank you we make a decision to do that. If you're watching today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's real easy to do. All you got to do is say, Jesus, come into my life. Make me brand new. Forgive me of all my sins. I believe you, you died for me. I believe you were raised from the dead for me. If you'll do that, and make him Lord of your life, you'll be born again and you'll get to see him face to face just like our moms did, just like we all will, those of us that know him. Amen. Looking around the room today, I know we're all saved and we love Jesus. But I want to pray, say this prayer over each of you. Lord, I just thank you that our church family, those that are watching, those that are here today, Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord God, that they know that sickness and, and disease is not from you, Father God that you are always our source, that, you are per that we are personally your witnesses, and that, Lord, because of you, we are always an overcomer. Lord, may we never forget that. May we let those things, and those simple truths, the ABCs of our faith, guide us in every situation. And we just give you praise, and we give you thanks for these things right now. In Jesus' name. And everybody shouted, Amen. Amen. Hey, before we go today, I'm going to have Pastor Matthew come up here and close this out. But uh, if you have an offering today, just put it in the bucket as you go out today. It is really a pleasure and an honor to see everybody here today. This is a good-looking crowd. It's actually a little bit more than I thought we would have, and uh, which is great. And uh, we're very thankful. Are you glad to be back in ha home today? Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a big thanks for that. Come on. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We'll say goodbye to you at the back door today. Amen. Well, praise God. Uh, thank God for mothers. You know, the world wouldn't run without mothers. Amen. We don't always, not everyone has a mother figure, like a mother that's living or, or whatever, but we all have someone in our life that is a mother figure to us. Thank God for the mother in my life that's raising my children. She does such a good job. But never assume that they know that. Um, be sure you tell them. So whoever it is in your life, there's someone in your life right now that you can think of that you can say i love you and thank you uh go out and do that amen praise god uh if you would bow your heads let's pray together father we just thank you for how good you are we thank you for sending jesus to die for us we thank you for those that are in our life that are special to us and we thank you for them we thank you we pray blessings over them peace over them joy over them 
And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Go out into the world and enjoy the nice spring weather. Amen.